station. This is Houston. Are you ready for the event on MPC? On MPC, I'm ready as well. CBS, the talk. This is Mission Control Houston. Please call station for a voice check. Station for a voice check. Station, this is the talk. How do you hear me? I hear you loud and clear. How me? We hear you loud and clear. Excellent. Welcome to the International Space Station. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, I've been here, but I've been there before. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Getting by. Here we go. Welcome back to the talk. Today we have a special treat. We're about to meet a mom whose devotion, let's just say, reaches beyond the stratosphere. Katie Coleman is a NASA astronaut and a mother of two, and she joins us now from the International Space Station. Hello, Katie. Hello. This is so cool, isn't it? Hey, Katie, well, I want to ask Welcome aboard the space station. This is Leah. Look at this. Wow. Are you going to be okay, or? <laughs> There's a delay, too, so we got to take that in. Katie, can you hear me? You know, we, 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 yes, I can hear you. Yes, I can hear you. Oh, good. Okay, well, I'm not the brightest person, so please don't try to say smart things when you're talking to me, but when you're talking to Sarah and Julie, you can say, you know, things that have to do with what you're doing. Um, <laughs> I want to know about your day-to-day. -day. Like, what? Take, take me through, like, an average day for you. What, you. You have your own room. You get up. What do you do? Do you shower? Do you, do you have a chef? What, what goes on up there? <laughs> You know, we, we get up in the morning, brush our teeth, eat breakfast, just like uh, everybody else, um, except that everything we do, we're weightless, and, and all the things we're doing it with are weightless as well. So you start off with that teeth brushing thing, and I have to say, you know, spitting, that's going to be a problem. So we swallow our toothpaste, and uh, the day goes weightless from there. And that, what, is your, what is your average work day? Is it like a real eight-hour day, or...? And then what do you guys do? You sit around looking out the windows? Or what do you guys do? <laughs> this is what I want to know. You know, seriously, uh, we live to look out the windows because it is simply amazing uh, to look out. And, you know, it, every day is different looking down at the earth. It depends on the weather. It depends on the lighting. I'm learning geography hand over foot. And so we live to look out the window. But I will say that most of our work is inside, you know, here in the space station. I'm in the Japanese, uh, the Japanese part of the space station. Um, it's the module that they built for experiments. We have a European module. We have a Russian section, a, a uh, United States section the Canadians built the arm it's a big big international venture and every day um, actually the night the the night the day begins the night before because I look at the schedule see what I'm going to do and I study up and uh, and just try to understand what experiments uh, I'm going to do and I can actually show you one of them uh, one of them's coming right at me right now Wow so cool what's that? So before I, before I show you this, let me just uh, show you something else. Oops. It's going to come back to me, okay? I want to show I want to show you why we do these experiments, and that is because this is a bag of water, okay? And I'm squeezing, squeezing. Let's see. So it's a brand new bag of water, and so my straw was a little crimped there. And I'm going to come a little fo closer, and you can see this giant blob of water. And we're getting to see in space what do liquids really, really want to do. Wow. That is amazing. That is amazing. Yeah. 
So I'm curious, because I know you have kids at home, how do you stay close to your kids? Oh, oh wow. wow. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. I'm just curious how you stay close to your kids while you're in space. Well, one of the ways that, that we stay close is I try to keep him really interested in, in what I'm doing, and I'm shaking up our, our fluids experiment so you can kind of see, you know, what the what a real experiment looks like and not just uh, playing with our water drops, but understanding how fluids behave in space. Well, it, it has to do with everything we do at home. And everything that we wear, everything that is in our house that is made with a process of something flowing through a pipe, we need to understand what liquids do. And this experiment actually shows us um, how to design fuel tanks for satellites. And you think, well, gee, why would I care? Everybody uses a cell phone, electronic devices, communication, military defense, you name it. And it all comes from things like this. When we talk about um, trying to keep my son interested, another way I do that is actually to bring um, one, some, one of his things with me up to space. He's a big fan, and so am I, of Calvin and Hobbes. And so um, I've brought a little, uh, a little Hobbes up in space with me. And I bring Hobbes to do experiments, and I take pictures and send them down to the ground so he understands what I'm doing every day. And I did that while I was training for this mission as well. That's so cool. Wow. So, Katie, since you've been in space, uh, what extra daddy duties has your husband um, had to take on since you're there on a six-month mission? Well, you know, I think a lot, and I really thank him for, for doing all of that. And, uh, you know, I would have to say it's, it's uh, hard for me to, to let some of that go. You know, everything's not going to be done maybe the way that you would do it. And yet I know my son is in great hands. He's just a super, super dad. I, I think it's hard for any parent to be a parent alone. I know that um, because my husband and I both commute, we have a commuting marriage, we're both single parents in a certain way. And so uh, I think uh, it's really hard for him just because there's, there's nobody else to help, really. On a somber note, uh, we, oh, OK, hang on one sec. Okay. Your commander there in space is the brother-in-law to Congresswoman Gabrielle Giffords. Um, what has it been like at the International Space Station since the Tucson shootings? You know, it's it's hard to be far away when uh, when things are happening down on Earth, and I can't speak for Scott, but I think something like the tragedy in Tucson, at least for me, it, you know, it, it makes me think how how precious all my relationships are, and and it just made me want to call you know everybody that I love and and just make sure that they knew that uh, I cared about them. And uh, it, up here, you know, I, I think that we're. Uh, we have a serious job to do, and we're intent on doing our jobs, and we try not to let things get in the way. And at the same time, there's a there's a value in just um, you know thinking about what's going on and and uh, and trying to come to terms with it. Yeah, I'm curious. Does it get lonely in space? Well, you know, I was very excited about this interview just because I won't necessarily say it's lonely up here, but there are not a lot of other women. And so actually the thought of um, sort of having coffee with you guys was really appealing to me. In fact, I brought mine. <laughs> you know, I'm serious that there's something nice about uh, girlfriends. <laughs> love there's something nice about sitting around with your girlfriends and saying hello. I'm curious how you also prepare to leave for six months. That's such a long trip. 
Well, you know, I did my best. I know I've left a lot of holes. Uh, I'm still writing back and forth with my husband and making sure he understands how to get my W-2 and all those kinds of, you know, administrative things. Um, you know, my, my son is, had known for a couple years <laughs> that I'd be going to the space station, and I tried to make it really clear when it would happen. It took several years to train. I traveled to Japan, to Europe, to Russia, and around the U.S. training for really almost three years to get ready for the mission, and that's actually worse in a way than being up here. They like to say that when I'm up here, at least they know where I am. And in fact, they have an application, um, where a computer program that they look at, and they know exactly where I am. And, and they go, Mom, you're going over Australia. So it's, it's pretty fun to be up here now where they know where I am. What research um, are you doing in space that you're most excited about? On a day-to-day -day basis, I love to do the things that I actually get to, to touch and move, like the experiment that you saw with the bubbles um, just now. But um, some of them aren't as tangible. We're doing some research in osteoporosis, which I think is fascinating and valuable. Basically, I'm an experiment, and I because we lose bone mass up here because we don't walk around on our legs, we lose bone at about 10 times the rate of a 70-year-old osteoporotic woman. And so, because I don't have some of the potential complications that somebody who's 70 might, um, I'm sort of a clean medical specimen to do some experiments. And so, I'm um, taking some of those drugs, and we're looking at how my bone mass is changing. And we'll, we looked at it before I left, um, while I'm up here, and also when I get home. And it'll help us understand a lot about how osteoporosis, the mechanism of osteoporosis, which uh, certainly affects millions of people down on the earth. Do the health implications of that scare you? I won't say they scare me, but I, I'll tell you that I take them uh, very, very uh, uh, um, seriously in that we exercise um, you know, about almost two hours a day, which I'll say I'm not disciplined enough to do down on the earth. Um, but I do it up here because the implications of not exercising are really having a tremendous amount of bone loss. And I have a 10-year-old, and I figure I still have a lot of running around to do when I get home. Katie, I wanted to ask you, other than your family, your son, what do you, as a woman, what do you miss the most? You know, I, I'm actually so excited about being here and just living in this environment and discovering new things every day in terms of what's delightful about just being here, about moving back and forth. Um, it's, it's just really such a neat place. I don't actually miss anything yet. Um, I certainly miss my family quite a bit. And, uh, but it, at the same time, it's not as if I wish to be there. I'm really happy to be here. <laughs> Katie, you mentioned that um, you exercise two hours a day, but being that you have no gravity, how do you exercise in space? You know, it's a good, great question, and uh, we have a weightlifting machine, which works uh, it works on a principle of vacuum. Like, I'm not really lifting weights, but I'm pulling against something that's that's pulling on a vacuum, and so it's really hard. Like, you know when you're trying to get a, a lid off a jar that's got vacuum on it, it's harder than if there was no vacuum, or when you're pulling against something. So that, we do weightlifting, and I'll do, you know, uh, we have a, it's like a gym, you know, I have a, we have a bar, go up and down, and you use my legs. I can do sit-ups, all these arm weights. We have a treadmill that I wear a harness, and it holds me down on the treadmill. And I have to say that it was really interesting, um, after a few days of not exercising, floating around up here, it was fascinating to suddenly be on the treadmill, standing on your feet. And I thought, wow, standing, that's interesting. <laughs> What's the first thing you want to do when you eventually do get home back to your family? Well, I'm assuming a shower will be like right in there. I mean, I'm actually clean up here. You know, my hair is clean, and you know, we have we take sponge baths literally, and so you're clean. But there's just nothing about like being, you know, actually in a shower. I think, um, you know, just being on the earth and walking around on your feet, and I think smelling, and and smelling, you know, just the garden and outside and the street and cars and 
that that kind of sense is a little missing up here and even just listening to noises that aren't just the hum of the space station and feeling the wind i'm looking forward to maybe being on a beach and feeling the wind and looking at the ocean as we get ready to say goodbye is there any message you'd like to send out to your 10 year old son or, or your husband your family Well, you know, I, I miss them so much, and I appreciate, I mean, they, it's a lot of work for them for me to be gone. And I'm just hoping that while I'm up here, the things that I'm doing end up being worth it. And I actually just really think that they will be. What we do here in space somehow says to kids, wow, don't you want to be an astronaut? Don't you think you could do this? Somehow they look at us and they think they could do this, and they're right. And it inspires them to study hard in school and learn the math and science that they need to be part of the future because they are the future. So it's a long time to be away from family. It's actually a magical place to spend that time in. Uh, and, and I think that the payoff is, is very big. It's nice to be with you guys today. Katie Coleman, thank you so much for joining us. We wish you the best of luck up there in space. Keep doing the good work you're doing. Take good care. We'll be right back. Thank you, and thanks for inviting me. Station, this is Houston ACR. Thank you. That concludes the event. Happy, thank you. thank you. Nice to hear from you guys. Thank you. The talk station, we are now resuming operational audio communications. <laughs>